Welcome back to the Super Coach Nuff channel. In this video, we're going to do a round three review for NRL Super Coach in what was another uh, fantastic week for myself. Uh, as you can see, scoring 1,153 points, which was uh, just outside the top 5,000 for the round and has seen our overall rank skyrocket again um, into just outside the top 13,000. So Considering two weeks ago we were 106,000th um, and you know we halved our rank last week, we were hoping to halve it again. Um, we've just about quartered it, so uh, sort of jumped, I guess, two weeks progression of halving our rank. Um, and as you can see as well, a win in the draft league is nice. Six out of six leagues across, I guess, all of the head to head leagues that I'm in. So, all in all, a fantastic week. But I guess if we have a look specifically, so get the confetti, miss the uh, the kernel, I need to get the KFC sponsorship back. Um, but Harry Grant with a 63, so I didn't watch the, the game last night. I'd sort of had a bit of a lazy day yesterday, if I'm being honest. I watched all the three games on Saturday, um, if, that's, if that counts for anything. <laughs> but uh, Harry Grant with the 63 was solid. Joey Lusick, you know, we weren't expecting uh, the 70s that we were getting every week from him. So 37 is fine. He's made 70K, I think. Yeah, 76K. You know, he probably still got a good break even, negative six. So, uh, you know, can definitely keep him for the short term. Ruben Cotter uh, with a 47 and potentially maybe injured for a couple of weeks. So um, it could be worse. We could be uh, Tino owners who, unfortunately, he's out for the season. Um, in sad news, you know, he was definitely one of the guns we were targeting for the uh, end of end of year. But um, we may have to reconsider our front row options. Um, and Terrell May, you know, again, a bit below his first two rounds, but 44 for um, his price will absolutely take that. Uh, Liam Henry was really impressive on the weekend with 55 points. So he's made a good chunk of cash and he'll have a negative break even. So negative seven. So... You know, wasn't overly convinced in the preseason, but, uh, you know, he's been a good pickup. Uh, Sam Hughes of the 23, so he's just going to be a slow burn. You know, I think he'll he'll pick up minutes throughout the season, but um, at the moment he seems to be, you know, the fourth forward. You know, they've got Mann and, and Karen who play big minutes, and uh, seemingly Curtis Moran preferred over Hughes at the moment. But... Um, yeah, I guess, you know, it's only going to take one sort of more injury in the middle forwards. And, uh, you know, Hughes will be in for more minutes. In the second row, so Viliami kick out, uh, 82 points, I guess. This is what we sort of envisaged, envisaged him being able to do. Um, but I guess, you know, it wasn't just obviously the try, but the kick pressure. Like, he, he turned Tanner Boyd to water, essentially, with one of the the charge down attempts and just Tanner Boyd just threw the ball, essentially said, just have it. I'm not going to be able to kick it. Um, and, yeah, you know, that's – and, you know, if the Bulldogs can sort of keep that energy up against the better teams, then, uh, you know, Viliami kick out is, is worth a shout. He's going to make some, some money with a break even at 22 this week. Um, so – you know, if he can push towards 600k, we'll be pretty happy. Uh, Brennan Piacora, so 57 this weekend. Um, did lose a bit of value, but uh, his break-even will reset now after the um, the four rolls out of his average. So, you know, 48 and 57 to work with. Um, you know, he'll make a bit of money. And obviously, you know, this 57 was including the fact that he got pushed out onto the edge. Um, further, I guess, in the centres because of injury. So, you know, Piacora is fine for the time being. Smithies with a 38, so a bit below what we had previously. I uh, didn't see his minutes, so 67 minutes, so that's interesting. Uh, not as many tackles, a couple of missed as well. An error, but, yeah, just interesting. Just didn't have to do as much defence, perhaps, I don't know. Weird one, but um, no need to stress. He's made some money. He'll make some more. 
Zach Hosking we bought in and he scored a 52. So he's made us about 90,000. Yeah, almost right on. So, you know, that was the, the play to bring him in. He still has a break even of 13. So there is a bit more juice to squeeze. But at the same time, I think we want to uh, to get in our our guy, Finny Fuiaki. So, um, yeah, be interesting to see what we end up doing with that pick. Uh, Curran, you know, 52 in probably what was um, about what we can expect from him normally. So, you know, making some money, still got a good break even of eight, um, but did only play about the 45 minutes in the middle. Um, but, you know, if he's scoring a, a point per minute, then we'll absolutely have that. Uh, Joe Chan was a late out, so uh, we weren't going to play him anyway. And now he's on the buy, so he's a bit of an awkward one. But I think we hold, um, you know, I don't think Sean Bloor knocked the door down yesterday with his uh, performance, so it may still be Chan's spot. But the fact that Bloor got through close to 80 minutes could also mean that this becomes a, a dead pick, which is just unlucky. But, um, I mean, he's owned by 37%, so we're definitely not alone there in um, missing out if that's the case. Uh, so Nico Hines, probably his worst game in Sharks' colours. Um, you know, is leaking cash, but realistically, what are the options that we prefer? I know Moses went well on the weekend. Um, you know, you've got SJ, obviously, but, you know, there's not exactly a halfback option that I think is standing up and sort of saying, pick me. So we're going to keep faith with Hines, and, um, yeah, you know, he'll come good. Just give him a chance. Uh, Nathan Cleary was awesome, though. You know, 121 points. Um, you know, sort of, I guess, when, when I had him on the bench after the game on, uh, was it Thursday night? I can't remember now. Is that long ago? Have a quick look back. Yeah, Thursday night, I thought, oh, I might have missed something here. Not having Hines, but um, as you'll see, my, my uh, captaincy worked out all right in the end. Uh, Dylan Brown with a 55, so one to ponder, you know, do we hold? There is a, a couple of cheap options on the bubble this week. Um, you know, do we cash out and, and, you know, use the money elsewhere or do we, we stick fat given that, um, you know, he's playing the Tigers this week, although that didn't obviously pan out for Hines last week. But, um, you know, I think we picked him for a reason, so we'll give him a chance. Uh, Kyle Flanagan, though, looked good at the start along with the rest of the Dragons. And then, I guess, you know, once the Cowboys changed that momentum, uh, just unstoppable. But 71, you know, sort of makes it a bit trickier. You know, break even of 13. You know, he was going to be a simple trade-out option this week, but there is a bit of more meat on the bone. So one we need to think about. RTS, you know, he's come back. He's 79. You know, had a rough first week, but uh, this is why we picked him. So, no stress there. To a picky with a 35, so he's made some money. I think he'll make a bit more this week. Um, but then I think round five might be CNK coming back. Might be as soon as this week. I'm not 100% sure. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Uh, ben Travojevic, so only getting the 19. I uh, didn't see the game yesterday, so I'm not sure. What happened if he maybe he slid out onto the edge again? Played 61 minutes, so got benched, I'm guessing. But uh, let's see, 16 tackles, only five hit-ups, a couple of errors as well, wasn't helpful. So I just realised no hit-ups over 8 metres, that's weird. Hmm, don't know what happened there. But probably not one to hit the panic button on. You know, well, he's made 80k, was it? Oh, 30. Oh, that's right, he started at 270 ish. 37 and a half. You know, break even of 39 is not ideal, but um, might have to do some more research into that and uh, get back to it. Um, Bostock ended up being the, the loophole option um, for reasons displayed below. Um, but it did mean we, we had the Bulldogs guys on the bench, unfortunately. Hutchinson with the 64. 
So it must have been some attacking stats in that. I can't remember him running the ball too often. A try assist, but doing his defensive work as always. Um, oh, they ran the ball 14 times. There you go. Didn't realise. But uh, yeah, try assist, the line break assist as well, which, you know, when they're scoring points, that's what you expect and why we sort of had him in the, uh, the team. And, you know, he's got a nice break even now. So for those that held and didn't panic on him, you know, he will make some money. Hopefully push towards that 500k mark would be nice. Um, Salmon with the 35, so probably, you know, the one I am most concerned about. You know, given the dogs probably played that, that perfect sort of game and, you know, he still had limited sort of super coach impact. Um, so, you know, might be the one we can trade out to make moves this week. Um, Ethan Strange with a 29, so, um, yeah, I didn't see the, the Raiders-Warriors game. I, well, actually, I didn't see either of the games on Friday night, did I? What was I doing? I can't remember. Something important, apparently. But, you know, he's in 66% of teams. He's got a negative break even. So, you know, he'll have another breakout game and, and lifting in price again. So don't uh, stress on Strange. Uh, but James Odesco, we bought in last week for Ponga, and, you know, it turned out to be, I think, the right call, even though Ponga did pretty well on Sunday, Ave. Um, but Tedesco with the 135, you know, a pretty easy VC option. Um, did mean that we ended up with, I think, Sam Hughes' 23, but, um, you know, that's perfectly okay. Uh, Pappenhausen with the 78. You know, and a beaten side seemed to be pretty good from what I, I saw. Um, this, I did sort of see snippets of the game, but then got distracted. Um, but, yeah, you know, he was just always there and thereabouts, particularly, I think, with the halves out. He probably tried to do a bit more, which was, uh, you know, good for us as super coach owners. Um, but we'll have a look at the, the game day results. Obviously, as, a, as you saw, 6 out of 6 in the head-to-heads. And uh, probably would have done all right in the overall league as well. So Milk Mangs with the 1248. X Alepithobia. I don't know what that's supposed to be. But let's have a look at their team. Um, with a 1251. So had Cleary's vice captain, Tedesco on the bench. Scott Drinkwater turned up, which was good. Zach Lomax scored well. Had Galvin early, nice get with 72. Ruben Garrick with a 92 as well, nice. Yeah, so just solid all through. Yeah, well done, 12.51. We'll have a look at Milkman's 32.46. Must be up there overall, I reckon. We'll have to have a bit of a closer look at that too. Had Tedesco, Tommy Turbo as captain. Val Holmes with a 144, that's epic. Robson with a 95. So I guess, you know, all the Cowboys attackers were pretty good on the weekend. Uh, had Cleary as well. So I guess all, all the big hitters that went off were in that team. So uh, let's have a look overall just quickly. We, okay, so 32.46 is a little bit of a way down. DHM with 3,500. How do we get that far after three rounds? Having Fanoa Blake probably helps as a nice pod. Reese Robson, Bradley went all right. Having Isaiah Yo is a good pod. But has Cleary, has Garrick at fullback. So Tungo, Zach Lomax in the... So definitely some pointy difference picks there that obviously have just gone off the last few weeks. Fantastic. Great job, Gary. But I guess gone a bit off track there. Get back to the head-to-heads. So got up over Serenity now. We had Hines as captain, which is unfortunate. Had Appy Coruscant, though, which was mint. He was unreal on Saturday night. You know, definitely one I, I sort of was a bit upset I didn't go with in the end, but I guess, you know, did what I did <laughs> in, in the round one. Uh, Kai Pierce Paul with the 67 is a nice return. Had Cleary, which is nice. But, yeah, I guess, obviously, James Tedesco was the difference there for me um, over, you know, having Hines as captain. But, you know, that can happen. Uh, but just having a quick look. So, yeah, we've, 
Did we look at Milkman's before? Maybe, maybe not. I think we did. But good win there. Uh, yeah, a few in the thousands. But 12.48 is clear and away the, uh, the toppest pick there. Uh, League 2. So we have Saxaton only got uh, 1,016. So Ronaldo was the pod captain, you know, and I guess if it wasn't for that late, um, was it try or try assist? I can't remember. But it was there was some sort of attacking stuff late. Must have been line break. But, uh, yeah, you know, that boosted the score a little bit. A few errors which didn't help. But I think, you know, 56 is probably the, the the level that we expect. So it was a bold move, but I guess didn't pay off on this occasion. Turbo and Ponger as fullbacks. So I guess, you know, not having any of the, the big hitters that turned up was was costly, but still getting a 1,000 across the 17 is a pretty good effort. Having kick out, yes, come with me with the kick out pick. <laughs> Uh, let's have a look. Who else did well in this league? Might have been the highest score in the league this week. That's handy. Um, oh, maybe we'll just skip that. <laughs> and the Duke with an 875. I guess, you know, you get Nathan Cleary as captain on Thursday night, 120. You're probably cheering, but uh, it all fell apart after that. Taylor May flopped. Reese Walsh, unlucky with the injury. Um, Bryce Cartwright with a 27, that's not ideal. Phoenix Crossland with a 28. So I guess with Bradley back, that might limit his upside. You know, Cotter got injured. So it's probably just an unfortunate round after Thursday night. You know, having some points on the bench there probably hurts too. Um, but I guess that can happen. Uh, so Eels 2024 got close. Damo's walkabouts with 1186 is probably the highest in the league. So VC Cleary, nice call. Had drink water, so a few people drink water. Him, obviously, he did well. Robson, Finny Filiaki with 57. That's a nice get. Um, Tedesco as well, very handy. So, pretty decent looking team. Right on. Um, I guess just quickly on the draft as well. So, uh, 1,025 this week. I had had to play Crossland, so we'll take the 28. Um, played May over King, which was a bit of a mistake, but didn't cost me in terms of the, the draft. Um so there was a little bit of panic. If I just quickly skip over uh, Yo with the 69 and Preston with the 69. Uh, Metcalf with the 62. Um, Kiraz, 115, my boy. Um, killed it on the weekend. So I did originally have Cleary VC, Tedesco C. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'll take Cleary's 120. Um so I did have Dylan Lucas in the team as my captaincy loophole um, in the centre wing for this week. Um, and then it got to just before kickoff in the Newcastle game when I remembered. And I, I bricked myself and got on. I was lucky I could get Jack Bostock as a free agent. So, it, uh, yeah, otherwise I would have had Dylan Lucas as captain. So that's what happened there. Bostock ended up being my captain. But obviously, if I'd kept it on Tedesco, I would have scored more points. But in draft, it's purely head-to-head. -head. So I got the win. That's all that matters. Um, if we have a look at Shano's guns. So he had Timiko with a 91. That's pretty nice. Um, Harris with a 67. Tarpany, 53. So solid from them. You know, some 40s from the, the boys in the middle. I had Tanner Boyd, who, you know, just got monstered by Kikau and, and Co., um, but has chorus out, which is nice. Tommy Turbo is captain. Couldn't have done much better than that. So, uh, yeah. Just uh, racking up another W. And uh, the other matchups, so the Carlton Drafts getting a win. I've got Paul in my house. 
Johnson in the Haas, uh, defeated by Rolling Stones. Ross has been super active in the trade market. Um, so I don't know what happened there with the <laughs> with the uh, team. Captaining Hines might have been a slight issue, but again, that's probably what I would have done with that team. Um, had Moses though, which was nice. Uh, Croker, his horse getting up over Lane's train. And your mum's hole getting the win over Mrs. Fiddler. So, if we have a look at the league standings, is this where we get it? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. Um. Oh, view ladder. That's what I want. It's because I got the. Yeah. <laughs> So there's three undefeated, myself, Liam and Roscoe. So well done, guys. Um, and, yeah, we'll preview the round four matchup uh, when we get there. All right, but just, I guess, some uh, go back to classic, some quick thoughts on, uh, on potential moves for this week. So, obviously, you know, Lockie Galvin is probably the number one target we need to get in. It's just whether we, we trade Flano or Dylan Brown. Obviously, going Dylan Brand could lead us to do some more exciting things, but I think, you know, in the long term, Brand is going to outscore Flanagan. So it's probably going to be Flanagan for Galvin. I'm going to break even because he'd be top of that. So we've got 234k in the bank. Obviously, you know, we could have done like a cotter up to Tino or something like that, getting close, but uh, that's not on the radar now. So. You know, we might be able to start looking at strengthening the centre wing. Um, I guess to further do that, we'll probably do the Hosking to Finifuiaki trade. So 513k, which means we can go from whoever to whoever, I'm pretty sure. So if we get out of to a picky, as you know, he's probably on the, uh, the chopping block soon anyway. We could go, you know, Val Holmes, Tungo, probably expensive um, but you know crushing it at the moment um, leaning towards something like a, a Kiraz you know obviously banking 200k this week but you know with the hope that we can further reinforce the center wing going forward um, I think you know what's his break even will be pretty nice 22 you know South aren't exactly setting the, the uh, competition on fire might have a couple of tough weeks after that, but um, yeah, a bit of a mixed draw. But we do know the Bulldogs have a, a good run through Origin, and uh, you know what's another Bulldog player in my in my squad. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll just complete the trades for the time being, uh, and I guess you know we'll just have to look at changing around the the Storm guys. So Paps and Harry Grant are unavailable this week. I guess the other thing might be if Cotter is injured, we may have to, you know, force a move there somehow. Or we might just be able to, you know, go with Henry for a week. Um, it probably just depends. But we'll definitely have Fini Fibiaki in. Uh, we could even run with Galvin, given how good he's looked. Um, we'll just go with Salmon. So, you know, in terms of captain, vice captain... I think we might go with Tedesco again against Penrith. You know, it'll be an interesting matchup. But uh, Hines as captain, I think, is the, the call there. But um, the video's gone a little bit longer than I'd hoped, so I will wrap it up there. So as always, if you've got any questions, comments, thoughts, feel free to add them below this video. Uh, like the video if you enjoy the Supercoach content. Uh, subscribe for all the fantasy content on this channel. And other than that, we'll catch you in the next one.